Welcome back. This is slide six, and we're picking up with another deadly lung disease. This is pneumonia. And in this one, you may notice the x-ray here on the screen. You can see the patient's lung here is filled with a very uh, liquidy solution. And this is mucus. And you can see the other lung is a lot clearer. And so in this particular disease, it's infectious spread. It's by bacteria, usually. There are viral strains of this that are also very serious, and you can see that noted here on the screen as well. But the lungs fill with very watery mucus secretions. It's very different from when you get lung secretions related to bronchitis, for example, that are thick and real sticky. Pneumonia is very watery. It kind of like fills up the lungs almost like you're drowning, if you will. And uh, some strains of pneumonia are very serious. They can be resistant, and they don't respond very well to antibiotics. This is the pneumococcus bacteria that spread airborne that causes it. If you get a viral strain, then it does not typically respond very well to antibiotics at all because viruses in general are not killed by antibiotics, so you have to let it run its course. On the next screen, another illness that we're featuring is COPD, and this stands for chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. And there are many um, causes that are thought to evoke this particular syndrome in people. Um, here's some of the ones shown, tobacco smoke, air pollution. Um, this is a type of amino acid, a tryptosin deficiency. And these are some of the things that happen during COPD. People can get uh, emphysema, lose the elastic connective tissue in their lungs, irritation and chronic inflammation, chronic bronchitis, um, and uh, also often very current frequent infections, and so forth and so forth. This is like um, thought to be typically in uh, people who are having this type of failure in their lungs. It's obstructive, and it's usually people that have a history of smoking and um, also coughing and frequent pulmonary infections. You'll see this a lot of times in the patients that you're working with that are older, elderly. You can also get it in your elderly pets, for example. So fluid builds up in the lungs, backs up here into the bronchi and up into the trach, also will back up into the heart and the pericardium, cause the heart to actually swell and enlarge. And when the heart enlarges, there's a lot of pressure on the different chambers in the heart. And the heart has to work harder. And because the heart has to work harder, sometimes the inside of the chambers become smaller because there's a lot of inflammation and swelling in the heart. So the heart loses its capacity to really pump the way it normally would. It allows fluid to build up. And then that can be hard on the kidneys, and in turn, the kidneys can end up failing. This is kind of a long-standing disease. I mean, people that are diagnosed with this can live, you know, with medication 10 or more years. Sometimes it's not as long, but a lot of times it is. So we're going to look next at the functions of the respiratory system and Hopefully some of this is going to be kind of obvious, like this first one here, transport of oxygen and carbon dioxide between your lungs and your body. But um, this allows the body to dispose of carbon dioxide. And there's four distinct processes that have to happen in respiration. The first thing is pulmonary ventilation. I mean, you have to be able to move air into and out of your lungs physically. Some people that have diseases where they can't control their voluntary movements anymore, such as ALS, uh, may have to go on a ventilator, for example, so that they can move air in and out of their lungs. They're not able to do it on their own. Second thing is uh, external respiration. There must be a gas exchange between the lungs and the blood. And you could have something hampering that, like emphysema, where the alveoli are ruptured, and there wouldn't necessarily be gas exchange going on efficiently. Third thing is you have to have transport of oxygen and carbon dioxide between the lungs and the actual tissues. And the fourth thing is internal respiration, gas exchange between your systemic, that's your body-wide blood vessels and tissues.